Welcome to this video in which we will guide you step by step on designing a 100 km range EV tow aircraft. You can use the methodology presented herein for the EV tow design competition, the details of which can be found in our previous video. So without further ado, let's begin. Before designing any machine, one should be very clear about the requirements. The EV tow we are going to design will follow the FAI requirements for the ultralight category which allows a maximum takeoff weight of 450 kilograms for a capacity of two people. We also need to have a range of at least 100 kilometers with 30 minutes of extra flying time for reserve. The EVTOL challenge has laid out that the aircraft should be designed with battery power only and therefore the use of hydrogen fuel cells and electric generators is not considered here. The energy density at the cell level needs to be 250 watt hour per kilogram and at the pack level it must be no more than 200 watt hour per kilogram. Note that in the challenge video a value of 180 watt hour per kilogram was mentioned at the pack level but this has been revised to 200 watt hour per kilogram. As the aircraft is an EV tow which would spend time in hovering the weight of the battery pack cannot be more than a third of the aircraft weight. This is because any higher amount of battery weight would negatively impact the overall performance as studies have suggested. And therefore our battery pack weight cannot be more than 150 kilograms. When designing an aircraft you basically need to meet four constraints of mass, energy, power and lift. The total mass of the aircraft cannot exceed more than 450 kilogram that is settled. The energy has to be enough to allow the aircraft to cruise to 100 kilometers alongside the energy for takeoff and landing. Furthermore, maximum power will be spent during the 20 seconds of takeoff and 20 seconds of vertical landing. The battery should be able to handle this high power during the initial and final phase of flight. Lastly, we need to have enough lift that even when the aircraft is slow, our stall speed does not exceed 40 miles per hour. This again is a requirement by the FAI for the ultralight category in Europe. A list of motor and propeller arrangements given for the challenge are shown here. You can also find the weight, power required and the thrust generated in the table. Similarly, the weight of the ducted propeller instead of open propellers is also shown alongside with the reduced power for the ducted type. In the case, the aircraft is a tilt wing or a tilt rotor. The added weight required for an electric actuator is also provided. For designing the airframe, an assumption that each square meter of the airframe will weigh two kilograms is reasonable, as mentioned in the challenge spreadsheet. This is based on the material of uniform thickness, so you only need to provide two dimensional design of the airframe. If you are to use spokes in your design, then the weight of the spokes is also given. So with the requirements now set, let's start looking at the design parameters. My first consideration is to find out the total weight that I can play with. I already know that my maximum takeoff weight is 450 kilograms. If I take away the 30 kilograms for the two seats that I need to install, then given that each crash seat weighs about 15 kilograms, I'm left with 450 minus 30 or 420 kilograms. If I take out the weight of the avionics, then I'm left with 405 kilograms. I also need to take out 176 kilograms because that is the weight of two people on board, which is based on the average weight of 88 kilograms per person as used in the aerospace industry. This leaves us with 229 kilograms for the airframe, the propulsors and the battery. And this is really the weight that we need to focus on and we cannot exceed. All the design elements that are in your control must fall below this weight. So let's say I select from the list option three of props, which gives me 92 kilograms of thrust. I will be using five of these and will attach them to two pairs of tilt wings in a tandem wing configuration. The thrust here is given in kilograms just for convenience instead of newtons. So with five of these motor props, I will have a total thrust of 460 kilograms. This exceeds my maximum takeoff weight limits. So I have met one requirement. Note that 
My total lift generated is 460 kilograms, which is only slightly above the required 450 kilograms. This would give me very little lift authority in real life, which is not ideal, but that is a topic for another day. Next, I will design the airframe. I will go with the tandem wing configuration. So here you can see my design. I've gone with front wing of three meters by one meter and the back wing is also similar. This gives me a total wing area of 12 square meter. To find the total weight of my airframe, I will first find out the aircraft's surface area in square meters, ignoring the thickness and the underside. In the spreadsheet, it is suggested to use two kilograms weight for every square meter plate. My area comes out to be 30.5 square meters, which gives me an airframe weight of 61 kilograms. For tilt wings, I need two electric actuators of 1.2 kilograms each. I also need spokes of 0.8 kilograms for my rear ducted rotor and another 0.5 kilograms for the tilt mechanism for the rear ducted propeller. The weight of my four 1.6 meter long propellers plus motor configuration comes out to be 5.3 times four, which is 21.2 kilograms while the ducted motor is 8.5 kilograms, which would give me a total weight of 29.7 kilograms. The total weight of the airframe, propulsors, actuators, and spokes comes out to be 94.4 kilograms. So out of the 229 kilograms available for my design, I'm now left with 229 minus 94.4 kilograms, which is equal to 134.6 kilograms for my battery. I will use all of this available weight for my battery. This also is less than 150 kilograms, which is another tick for meeting the requirements. As the rule suggests that I will have to use a pack level energy density of 200 watt hour per kilogram. So if I use all of the weight available to me, then I will have a battery pack capacity of 200 times 134 kilograms, which is equal to 26,920 watt hours or in other words, 26.9 kilowatt hours. If I look at the battery chart, I find out that out of this 26.9, only 50% is available for cruise, that is 13.45 kilowatt hours. Now you can calculate the range of the aircraft using the following simple equation. If we multiply the battery energy for cruise in joules with the propulsive efficiency, and the lift to drag ratio and divide that whole thing by the weight of the aircraft, then we can get the range. We can get the propulsive efficiency and the lift to drag ratio from the table given in the spreadsheet. Supplying all the values in the equation gives us a distance of 107,929 meters, or in other words, 107.9 kilometers. This means that our aircraft passes the requirement for the desired range of 100 kilometers during cruise. My design uses 21 kilowatts per rotor for the four rotors on the wings. Furthermore, it will also use 16.8 kilowatts for the rear rotor slash propeller. Note that with the ducted fan, the required power is less for the same amount of thrust. The penalty is, however, the 3.2 kilograms of additional weight because of the weight of the duct. This means that during hovering, my aircraft would consume 84 plus 16.8 kilowatts, which is a total of 100.8 kilowatts. We can now check if we meet the power requirement of the battery. Remember that we had about 26.9 kilowatt hour of battery. From this, we can find out the weight of the cells. As the cell level energy density is 250 watt hour per kilogram, this means that the weight of just battery cells for 26.9 kilowatt hour of battery pack would be 107.6 kilograms. For the power requirement to be met, we cannot go beyond one kilowatt of power for every kilogram of cell. The total power we will draw is 100.8 kilowatts and the total weight of the cells is 107.6. This gives us a power ratio of 0.93 kilowatt per kilogram. So we have passed the test for maximum power as we are under one kilowatt per kilogram. Note that at the cell level, the energy density is higher. This is because 
At the pack level, we have to add other elements onto the cell, such as the enclosure, the thermal management system, the bus bars, and the BMS, etc. Now let's see if there's enough energy for vertical takeoff and landing. The 26.9 kilowatt hour is our battery capacity. From the battery chart, we can see that 12% is available for vertical takeoff and landing. This means that 26.9 times 0.12 or 3.22 kilowatt hour is available for takeoff and landing. We have already found that maximum power of 100.8 kilowatts would be required for 40 seconds, 20 for takeoff, 20 for landing. The simplest way to do this is to convert the 40 second into hour. So just divide the 40 by 3600, which gives us 0.011 hour. The energy required is simply then 100.8 times 0.011, which is 1.1 kilowatt hour. This is certainly less than what we have set aside for hovering, which is 3.22 kilowatt hour. So we have passed the vertical takeoff and landing energy requirement test. Let's now look at meeting the stall speed limit. For this, we have a simple formula. In this formula, the CL is the coefficient of lift. This is given in the chart. Note that because we have propeller efflux covering the bulk of the wing, we will have an augmented lift coefficient which is higher than the normal lift coefficient. For large propellers with tilt wing configuration, the coefficient of lift value is given in the chart in the spreadsheet and it is 4. The other parameter in the stall speed equation is rho, which is the density of air. A value of 1.2 kilograms per meter cube can be assumed. The major factor here is the area of the wings denoted by S. Supplying all the values in this equation gives us a stall speed of 12.3 meter per second, which is equal to 27.5 miles per hour. This also means that we have passed the test for stall speed as we are under 40 miles per hour. Finally, let's find out the flight time on reserve energy. We know that the lift to drag ratio is 12, meaning 12 times less thrust will be required from the propellers during cruise. This further means that the power the propellers are using will also drop. We can make an assumption here that the power drop would be at least 12 folds. In reality, the power drop is much higher. So the assumptions of 12 times less power is a safe assumption. And this implies that instead of 100.8 kilowatts that is used during takeoff and landing, only 8.4 kilowatts would be used during cruise. For more accuracy, you can reference the charts for power versus thrust for each of the propeller motor configuration through the web links available in the spreadsheet. From the battery chart, we can see that 20% energy is kept for reserve. The 20% of a battery with energy of 26.9 kilowatt hour is 5.38 kilowatt hour. Now, given that we are consuming 8.4 kilowatts, the 5.38 kilowatt hour would last for 0.64 hours. 0.64 hour means 38 minutes, which is eight minutes more than the required 30 minutes of reserve flying time. So our aircraft has passed the final check too. I hope with this video, I was able to explain how to design an electric aircraft with a range of 100 kilometers. And with this, the video is concluded. If you have any questions, please do put them in the comment section. Thank you for your attention.